Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to look at my top three ways to get imported geometry and turn it into SketchUp geometry. So I'm kind of seeing this as maybe the beginning of a, a little tiny series on, you know, architectural models, bringing plans or reference uh, geometry model stuff into SketchUp and turning into a 3D SketchUp model. Uh, my goal is not to just have a 2D, you know, convert 2D from another program into 2D in SketchUp. I do want to get a 3D SketchUp model out of what we import, but it's a little more than, uh, covering all of it is a little more than what would fit in one video. So this might be two or three videos. Uh, the first one I want to talk about though, is when we get reference images uh, or files and import them in, a lot of times they come in as just edges or pixels or whatever else. So I want to talk about that process. Let's look at the three top ways to get that imported geometry and turn it into actual SketchUp usable, modelable SketchUp geometry. Here we go. All right. So I did a couple imports right here. Um, I didn't want to get too, I didn't want to do, get too caught up on the exact imports because there's a couple ways to get this geometry imported. So I just kind of wanted to talk about what comes in. This is two different types of imports. One is a vector-based import. So this is something like a DXF or SVG or uh, DWG, something where you're importing actual geometry. The other is import of an image. This could be a, a GIF, a JPEG, a TIFF, a PNG, whatever. Um, these, this, this is an option for importing. Uh, it is possible to, you know, get reference geometry out of either one of these, but we're going to talk real quick about what's best. We're going to go with one of them and talk about the best three ways to turn it into actual geometry for SketchUp. So first let's look at the image. So when we import an image into SketchUp, uh, you're asked to first off kind of arbitrarily size it. So you just drag it out and it shows up. That's because there's not specific, uh, dimensions that come with an image like this. This is literally a bunch of dots. So if I zoom in here real tight, you can start to see, all right, so we get to about here, you can start to see, see how that's blurry and got different colors of gray in that. That are, those are the pixels that make up this drawing. Uh, and that could be scaled to any size pretty much. So when this happens, if this comes in, I do need some specific geometry. I, by the way, I intentionally made these with no dimensions on them, so we can't rely on dimensions. So if we were looking at this, we had to just go off of this, this would be very difficult because I would have to somehow find, you know, how long is this or how thick is a wall or something like that. And then I would have to take it and scale it. The other thing that would happen is when I come in here to actually draw in here, um, because this is a bitmap, because it's just a bunch of colored pixels, I can't snap to anything. It doesn't know that this is an endpoint. It just knows that this is where these darker black boxes kind of run in and then I have some grayish boxes here. It doesn't know that that should be a point that I can snap to right there. So one of the issues, and then this is how big of an issue this is, is up to you, but uh, one of the issues is if I want to draw this wall right here, I have to go here and I have to come up whatever I think that wall width is and then kind of figure out exactly what that wall width is to here, to here, to create that one piece. I don't have the ability to snap to anything. That is a the probably the biggest downside. Like I said, it's not too bad if you know, or if you have like dimensions or you're working, this is just a reference, but you have a set of a hard set of plans, that might not be too big of a deal because you can reference those images while you do that. Uh, down here, when we import vector line work, it usually comes into scale. The scale could be off because somebody could be working at scale and not have exported the full scale of something, something like that. That could happen. But generally speaking, it is going to be full scale. So if I come here and I draw a line from here to here, it's five and a half inches. That is correct. That's how wide that was when I drew it. Um, the other thing that's nice about vector images is they have points. So I can actually go from point to point. I can reference midpoints. Um, that's kind of nice. The one thing that should be considered when you import something like this, like a DXF or something like this, is grouping. So this comes in as one group. If I double click in here and see I get down, I got, oh, there's another group. 
Oh, I'm sorry. No, that was the first group. I didn't click into it. I failed that first test. I'm going to click into this group. Now what do I got here? Okay, I got some edges. But if I come to this door right here, oh, I see that's another group up here. That's just edges. Oh, that looks like that one's a group. Um, if I click into this door, I have more groups. So this is one of the issues that comes with importing uh, vector-based stuff is it is possible to get things grouped. Not necessarily a bad thing, but something to consider. Given my option between the two, I would prefer vector-based geometry. So that's what we're going to look at now. So we're going to look at three different ways now to get this into usable geometry. Because right now, like I said, it's a series of segments, line segments, and groups. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go in one layer. So I'm going to go into this group. I'm going to grab everything, right-click, Grab, try that again. Grab everything, right click, and explode. That's going to explode all groups. But it's only going to explode one level. So if there's anything below that one level, I'm going to right click again, explode again. And you see, see how some stuff's still highlighted? Those are the things that are still in groups. So if I right click again, uh, okay, there's no more explode. So right now we're down to just raw geometry. That's perfect. And like I said, we're one group in, that's fine. So I'm going to make this. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to copy this three times because we're going to talk about three ways to do this. 2x gives me three copies. All right. So way number one. Here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into my styles real quick. And I'm going to change the background color from white to something uh, that's like a oh, some kind of fun. Light blue. That's nice. Look at that. That's pleasant. Because um, what I could do is I could come into this group. And what I could do is I could find what I think is a closed shape and draw an edge along it. If it is truly a closed shape, then I'll get a face that will show up right there. So I could work my way around this building just drawing sections like this and having it close. This is this seems like monotonous. Oh, I've got to draw. But if you're checking dimensions as you go, if you're making sure this is all correct, then it's not a bad step to do because you can verify uh, that the geometry is what you're expecting it to be. So this is option number one. Number one is just kind of come through here, click on each wall, uh, and then see how they close up. This is also a great way to identify where is their problem. Because as I'm doing this, I might go to draw a line like this and find that something doesn't close properly because there's geometry missing. Something's broken. So it is a good way to double check the quality of the file you're working on as you create those faces. All right, so that's one way. And then, and then what, that's this is that's our goal for this video is to get faces in, and then from there those faces we could you know turn those up into full height walls. That sort of thing. But we want to look at just how to get the faces. Okay, so our second option come over here. Uh, we're going to try to force this to create a bunch of faces quicker than that, more than one time. So I'm going to draw a rectangle around this, so it's still grouped. And now I'm going to take my group geometry. After I have the rectangle on the ground below it, I'm going to right click. I'm going to explode. When it explodes, that new geometry finds that existing geometry. And what I can get in that case is hopefully uh, a whole bunch of closed pieces. So if I go ahead and let's get rid of this edge right here. There you go. You see a lot of those closed up. Not perfect. So I still have a couple spots here where for whatever reason it didn't intersect correctly. Uh, so I might have to do a little bit of cleanup. Um, something else that can sometimes happen is I can grab, if I have a group of geometry that didn't, so none of this stuff intersected, sometimes what I can do is I can grab those edges like that, and I can kind of kind of shift them up and then shift them right back down and then see if that like causes it to break. That time it didn't, so I might have to come in and draw some edges to actually break that. So that's possibly what you'll have to do in that case, but uh, that will get you closer to those automatic. And again, a lot of this has to do with the quality of the file you import. If you have a file you import and none of the corners quite close up, that sort of thing, that happens all the time. Uh, some CAD is not super precise. Some people draw stuff and they're not real concerned about tying things up exactly. That can happen. Um, the third way is using an extension, right? So I'm, I'm going to show an extension on this. So I know this is not beyond desktop, but we're going to use an extension anyhow. Uh, it's an extension from Enerot. It's available on the 3D Warehouse. It's called Enerop Face Creator. I can grab this and hit this button. And what it's going to do, it's going to just go in there and look for any closed loops and then close them up. 
So you can see all my walls there. Some of them are reversed. So some of them I, I would have to come in here and, you know, potentially these are face down. So I would say reverse face to get my white one up there. Or it really wouldn't matter too much because if I if my end goal is to pull these up into space, it won't matter if it's face up or face down because uh, when I pull them into 3D, they'll go the right way. But Face Creator goes through and finds all those closed loops and just makes them into faces. So this is a great way to do it because this is going to hit, in my experience, it's not perfect, uh, but it does do a majority of your faces are gonna get closed up this way. So there you go, three options. One is face by face drawing edges. One is intersecting my edges with a plane. And then the third option is right here is Enerot Face Creator to quickly and easily create a whole bunch of faces at one time. So you see nothing, none of it, nothing's perfect. Um, <laughs> I, I have, I struggle with this a little bit because personally, if I was responsible for taking a file or an image or a set of plans and getting them into SketchUp, I would probably prefer to be pretty manual about the process, right? Because if at the end of the day, the quality of that model is on me, then I probably want to go through and check those wall segments against the actual plans. I want to go through and make sure that, you know, what happens a lot of times, revisions get made, that sort of thing happens, and uh, a designer or architect will take a 18 foot wall and say, this is actually 18 foot six, and just change the dimension to 18 foot six. Should be fine, not a big deal. If you just get some lines and pull them in and you don't have that dimension to check against, it could be a little bit of an issue because you might just go blindly thinking the line's the right line when in fact, the intention is for it to be something different based on dimension. So again, this is just me personally. I would rather go through and check each of those dimensions against plan. So I would probably lean towards the, the least effective way, which was manually going through and drawing lines to close things up. That's probably how I'd go about it, but it's up to you. Sometimes these are your own files coming from a different place or an older version or something like that. So you might be good with, you know, I can just quickly make these faces and I know they're right, your call. Uh, so that was all about just getting those faces created. So now we can move into creating 3D walls, which is what we'll hit next time. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, leave us a comment down below. Do you have, a, does, do you have something outside of these three that is a better way to create faces? Let me know about that. Or do you have an issue that you're running into when you have to create plans out of drawings uh, or 3D models out of plans. Um, let me know about that in the comments too. Or if you have another idea that you think would make a good video, leave it down below. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more. We're showing something you want to see. Thank you.